According to a quick Google search that I did, I found that Americans on average spend between $300 and $2,000 a year on Starbucks. Here at the Pew household, we have been doing something we call Starbucks Fridays, which means every Friday morning, we buy around $27 worth of Starbucks. That's a couple drinks for the adults, a couple breakfast sandwiches for the adults, and a cake pop or a donut for our daughter. Now, if you multiply that by 52, as in 52 weeks out of the year, that's $1,400 spent on Starbucks each year. And that's not to mention the one-off visits or the occasional Saturday where we go to Starbucks to pick up something or even in an afternoon as an afternoon pick-me-up. With two kids in daycare and a teacher and admin salary, we are constantly looking for ways to sort of cut costs. So recently I've been looking around for a way to bring Starbucks to our home, the coffee shop vibe to our home. And guys, I literally, I can't make this stuff up. As I was researching coffee espresso machines from DeLonghi and Breville and other companies like that you might have heard of before, Ultima Cosa reached out via email and asked if I would like to review their machine for the channel. So this is an all-in-one grinder espresso milk steaming machine from Ultima Cosa. Today we're going to be unboxing it and setting it up, playing around with it at its around $350 price tag. This machine could be a game changer for those of you wanting to bring the coffee shop experience into your home. So we're gonna look at how easy it is to use this and how it stacks up against some of the other well-known brands out there. I'm really excited to bring my dear friend Samuel Copeland along today for this video to talk about the machine, talk about our thoughts and opinions, talk about the price tag, and how this compares to something like the Breville machine, the DeLonghi machines that you might be used to. Ultimately, today's question is, can the Ultima Cosa espresso machine compare to something like the Breville DeLonghi at half the price? If so, you might just be in luck. At any point in today's video, if you are convinced that this might work for you, check the link in the description to order yours today and you will receive a discount through my affiliate link. All right, let's go make some coffee. Hello, here we are. Here I am with Sam Copeland in Sam's kitchen. Thank you, Sam, for allowing us to be in your kitchen. Yeah. Do you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Hi, my name's Sam. This is my kitchen and Spencer and I are friends. We sure are, and we share a love for coffee. I'm gonna let Sam talk a little bit about his Breville machine, what it's called, and how much it cost, because he's been using this for how many years now? We got this about three years ago. This is the Breville Barista Pro. I think that's the full name. And we got it because my wife and I both love coffee, and especially my wife, after we lived overseas for a couple of years, got very accustomed to drinking espresso and likes frothy milky drinks nice. i'd been mostly a pour over drinker and then we got into espresso at home with the brittle barista pro one thing i wanted to do really is just let sam shine on this part of the video because he's been making espresso based drinks for longer than i have and he's been using this breville machine for longer than i've obviously had the ultima cosa here Really what I want to do in this segment of the video is just talk up kind of like comparing the two. Sam, what are your first thoughts about the t these two machines and how they compare? So the Breville is expensive. In the world of espresso machines, all of these at home espresso machines pale in comparison to how expensive a real, I, sh I don't know if real is the right word, but like a pro grade espresso machine would be, but still not cheap. If you can get like a drip coffee maker for 50 bucks on Amazon, and make coffee, this is definitely a luxury item. So the pros, $850 retail. I think just like first impressions, now that I've seen yours out of the box, this has like the same vibe and looks of the Breville machines and like Breville has tiers. So there is like one with a more like manual gauge in the Breville line um, that might be a better direct comparison, but like the parts and features very similar, but I think the Breville machine has a lot more like stainless steel uh, components. This has like some more plastic, even these, like, I don't know, we haven't turned it on yet, but I'm curious to see like how these buttons interact since they're not actually like, yeah, they're like depressible buttons, touch sensitive, yeah, but so I don't know, which this one does have a digital display. So it's not even totally manual, which made me a little bit worried in terms of like which is gonna break first, a digital part or like a mechanical part, but it's been great. We use it almost every day for the past three years and have loved it. 
I don't know. Other than that, like you could look up the tech specs and like look at these on pages next to each other. So I'm not really going to go like that far into it in terms of like how much water it holds or that sort of stuff. All the other features seem very similar. So you got like the grinder built in, you've got a steam wand on both. You've got a couple of different grind sizes on both to pull a single shot or a double shot. You've got a tamper. This has got like a little magnetic one hidden under there, a couple of different basket sizes. So like all that stuff looks super similar to me. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, I, I like to, you know, face these reviews from sort of like an average consumer perspective. And I think, you know, the biggest noticeable thing I think, which Sam hit on is just like the quality of materials, like pretty much every inch of this is some kind of metal or I don't know, really sturdy plastic. And you'll see on the Ultima Cosa, really just metal down here where the water touches. Even this sort of chrome look here is just a plastic itself, plastic pretty much all the way around, which you gotta cut costs somehow when making these things. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Obviously this one kind of, if you're really into how it looks and the materials, this is a more premium look. But as Sam said as well, it is the pro model whatever that means in their lineup over at Breville. But really what matters to me today is do they make coffee and do they do it well? And if we can tell a difference, that's pretty massive, I think, or at least me, if I can tell a difference. I think next we're just going to fire these machines up and I'm gonna let Sam make me two cups of coffee and we can both taste them, of course. But yeah, so let's move on to that. Okay. That looks pretty good. Not clumpy or anything. This thing is dense. Good or bad? I mean, I guess if you're new to tamping, good. Because you have like some built-in weights. You're not like really pushing it down more than it needs to be pushed down. But that all feels pretty clean and nice. Let's see what it looks like. This is it double shot, yeah? What we're double doing? shot. That looks pretty good. Creamy, good in the pressure range that you'd want. Maybe a little bit fast, but see how it tastes. So it takes a second to heat up, I have found. That's, yeah, that's interesting. It is taking a second, but it is blinking to let you know it's working. Just getting this wet to clean it with later. Pro tip. And you always want to start with it in the milk so it doesn't splash everywhere. What kind of temperature are you feeling for? Basically just trying not to let it get scalding hot. So right now I'm trying to uh, create some foam by letting some oxygen in. And then as that starts to froth, I can plunge it deeper in just to heat up the milk. But I think, with how much steam I'm getting out of this, it's probably just not gonna be super foamy. Cuts off very fast. Always wanna clean your tip, what that looks like. Nice. Let's see what we can do here. How good are you? Have to find out. Okay, we got something on top. That's a shape. It's a spade. All right, that's what we made from the Ultima Cosa. That's what Sam made, and I just stood here. Cheers. You wanna try it? Yeah. Yeah, not bad. It smells good. It's coffee. It's good to me. It does feel a little bit lower quality than what I'm used to. Just like the function of the butt, like the way this turns and stuff. It's just a, a feel and interaction thing more than anything. I do think a big factor is like programmability, like how hard is it to change the grind side and the dose that you're getting out of it. And then speed, like this is pretty warm right now because the boiler's been going for a minute. Like how quickly can it pull a shot and then recharge to steam? How many could you do like in quick succession? Those would be some things I'd be interested in testing. Because in the, I mean, you don't need a ton, but maybe if you're hosting people, you need to make four or five or six. Uh, probably every morning you're making at least two, so. How quickly can you pull two out of it? I think a lot of these, it's just like a single hole on the bottom of the steam wand, which I was struggling to get like good foam. So like this is not super frothy on top. You can see it's like very thin foam and then you're down into the drink. It's more of a flat white than a latte or anything. Is that user error? Is that fully? It may be, like I'm not used to using this. So like maybe you could do better over time than I just did, but with just one hole, you're also not getting that much steam at one time. Yeah. So is that how the Breville is? No. So that was a big factor for us going from like the standard Breville up to the pro was that it's got a slightly better steam wand. That's I good... think overall, like that's a good cup of coffee. There's nothing wrong with that cup of coffee. Nice. I thought so. Yeah. All right. That's a good transition. Let's see what the Breville can do. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Should we make another one? Yes. Let's do it. Oh, 
All right, what differences are you seeing? I mean, my workflow is really fast with this because I use it a lot. So I'm comfortable kind of with the, my process. I think that shot was a lot slower, which might just be dialing in your machine a little bit more, getting the grind size right and getting the extraction right. Because from what I've read, I've read, you want like a 25 to 30 second extraction to get it like good creamy espresso, at least on this machine. So you could check that for the other machine. And then this machine's also really fast. Like I think that was a little bit underrated in what I was looking at. Like you can see how quickly it's already steaming and then even how quickly it turned on, how fast you can pull a shot. The technology in the pro machine, I think it says like it's ready to pull a shot or ready to steam or do boiling water within three seconds of turning it on. That makes a big difference. If you remember, we just had to wait a while with the other steam wand for it to start going. This one's a little bit quicker. Doesn't necessarily mean better, but then I do think we are going to get a frothier steam out of this one. You can already see it looks fuller in the picture than the last one did at the end. But that's a much foamier kind of wet paint texture. And then we'll see if we can get any good latte art out of this one. A little fast on my part. I could have done that better, but a little more. Gorge. Distinct. But again, really just comes down to how does it taste? So let's see how you think, but I think the espresso comes through a lot stronger in that one, which again, just maybe getting the dosage right on your machine, but a little stronger espresso taste, more foam. I think I agree. Definitely more foam too. Even just like feeling yeah. how thick the top is. And I know there are different temperatures now, so this might not be best, but I think, yeah, for sure more like espresso. Yeah stronger do you want to compare the two sure but i don't know like it's almost like a preference thing too and i'm like you're saying settings wise i'm sure you can mess around honestly as this one's like mellowed out cooled off a little bit this one almost just tastes like warm milk like yeah. just not enough coffee taste yeah again some of that might be preference like this might be too intense of a coffee taste for you and you might want a little bit of a thinner espresso or a different bean and you can like obviously this has a screen which you can kind of visualize what you're doing yeah in yeah the menu section this is like a little bit more you can even ch change the temperature of the hot of the water so like your shot comes out a certain temperature and that also plays into the boiling water dispenser but then you can also mess like with the grind size is all on the display. Interesting. And that's gonna affect, if I remember setting this one and I think yours was the same when we were just m messing with it, like really all you have to play with is your grind size to change your extraction. So you get your dosage right in terms of how much time elapses to get the grind amount that you want. Yeah. And then in terms of how long it takes to get it out and how much water comes out, the only other variable, so you set the water just like you set the grind, how long it takes to pull and you can change, so I'll explain this too, if you can see it. All of this is done through this menu button, which of course there's no screen. And you're kind of, I mean, we went by the handy instruction manual here. It's just a matter of, you know, button pressing. And I will say you can set time on each of these. You can set time on each of these, and then you can actually change the temperature as well. The Ultima Cosa is around $350, I think. And this one you said was, $850. Do you think this coffee was that much better than that coffee? <laughs> That's a hard thing to say, <laughs> to admit to myself that to me it's worth it. And I think it comes down to like who you are as a consumer, whether it's worth it to you or not. Cause that is a huge price jump to go from one to the other. So, yeah. but that's gonna vary depending on who you are and what you want from it. Sure. So, and it'll vary like how much you actually want to get in here and play around with uh -huh. these controls and stuff. And I think for a lot of people, especially if they're going to be spending like $350, uh -huh. they're just gonna want to hit buttons and have their coffee made yes. in a really fancy way. Yeah, there's a lot of preference here. I think it's great that both machines, you can dial in a few different things. Obviously, like I said, this one's a little more exact, I guess, as you're looking at the screen itself, but. And I would say from like a setup perspective, like the pain is gonna be in the initial setup. Uh, yeah, because I think with this one like I don't go around changing it all the time Like I said it when I first got it and probably in the past three years I haven't changed it at all. Yeah, as soon as you, you can kind of dial in yeah. your preference I think I'm happy with it at least yeah. and I'll you know dial it in like we've been trying to do Sam Thank you for your help today. Yeah, and your fun. expertise in the coffee realm Which I don't have but it's been fun definitely interesting putting these two drinks side by side. Definitely it's taught me I need to dial in the settings more on mine a bit more. And I think 
we were talking about like getting a stronger coffee taste. And I think that really comes down to grind size. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we were still, I guess, pretty we coarse. Gone, we we could have gone, gone smaller. Yeah. yeah. To have that stronger coffee taste. But anyway, this has been fun. Thanks, man. Yeah. Anything you want to say to people watching this video? <laughs> Drink more coffee. I love it. Thanks, dude. Or less, depending on your situation. Yeah. Thanks again to Ultima Cosa for sending me their espresso machine. I really enjoy this machine. I've been using it ever since Sam and I shot that video. I've really been enjoying experimenting with different flavors of syrups and just straight up coffee, just straight up espresso, just straight up lattes and flat whites and things like that. Me and my wife have really been enjoying this. Honestly, I think in my personal opinion, this is a really good machine. It hasn't let us down yet. Granted, we just got it, but I've really been enjoying it. I think the coffee tastes great. Obviously, a lot of that depends on the bean you use, all sorts of different factors as we kind of went over in today's video. But yeah, in my opinion, I think this machine holds up pretty well against something like the Breville lineup. I would argue probably against the DeLonghi lineup as well. I haven't actually tested their machines. I had one back in the day, but it was very different from this. But in my opinion, it's worth it. The price is pretty good and of course you'll be saving on all that Starbucks that you buy throughout the year if you're anything like us. So if you're interested in this machine, feel free to click the link down below for a percentage off. Thanks again to Ultima Cosa. Really enjoyed working with these guys and hopefully you will get a machine. And if you do, let me know how it is. Let me know any espresso recipes that you might have that I should try. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, watch this one. I think you're going to love it. Like this video if you did enjoy, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you all in the next one. I'm gonna go drink some more coffee.